Israel is intensifying its attacks on Rafah as international calls grow for a ceasefire. <laughs> This is video into us this morning from a freelance journalist working for CBC News. Health authorities in Gaza say the Al Mawasi tent camp west of Rafah was hit yesterday by tank shelling and at least 21 people were killed. Now, Al Mawasi is this is part of a designated safe area. Israel has denied striking the camp. Israel's push into the city of Rafah is drawing condemnation from international organizations, with aid groups warning the situation on the ground is rapidly deteriorating. Julia Wong is working out of our London bureau this morning and with us live to tell us more about what aid groups are now saying about the latest on the situation on the ground in Rafa. Julia. Well, Heather, the president of the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies is urgently calling for a ceasefire, saying it's the only way to get aid into Gaza. Now, these comments come after dozens of people were killed over the weekend and many more injured after an airstrike in Rafah caused a fire at a tent camp. Now, Israel says something went, quote, tragically wrong, unquote, and it did not intend to cause civilian casualties. Another strike, the one that you just mentioned a little bit earlier, led to more deaths yesterday. Now, as Israel pushes deeper into Rafah, there is growing concern about the worsening humanitarian situation for people in Gaza to get food, water, and other essentials. And it isn't just the Red Cross. The UN Secretary General is also demanding Israel stop its attacks on Rafah immediately and says Israel should abide by a decision by the International Court of Justice that orders it to stop its military operations in Rafah. The problem is that that military operation has been conducted in such a way that the number of civilian casualties and the destruction of civilian infrastructure and housing are unprecedented. The levels of destruction that are absolutely unacceptable. My plea for everyone is we're ready to give aid. We're ready to make a difference. We have to have access. And to have access, it has to have a ceasefire. Now, access to health care is another concern that aid organizations are warning about. The World Health Organization is saying an Israeli offensive into Rafah would effectively cut off access to the last hospital in Rafah. The WHO is warning more deaths could be expected. Julia, we're also hearing this morning reports that some important aid routes into Gaza, they have been suspended this morning. What more do we know about that? So we know the nonprofit World Central Kitchen is pausing work in its main kitchen in Rafa. This organization provides food during humanitarian crises and natural disasters. And last month, seven workers, including one Canadian, were killed in an Israeli airstrike. Now, World Central Kitchen had paused work in Gaza, but that had since resumed. Now it says these latest attacks from Israel have forced it to shut down in southern Gaza and relocate north. Also, the U.S. Pentagon says it's suspending aid because its $320 billion floating pier has been damaged. The Pentagon is blaming high seas and a weather system for causing part of the pier to separate. Now, this pier was an, was an alternative to getting food and other supplies into Gaza since southern crossings were sometimes inaccessible or they might just not be operating. And the pier was relatively new. It had only been operating for about two weeks now the Pentagon says it could take more than a week to repair it and then re-anchor it. Upon completion of the pier, repair and reassembly, the intention is to re-anchor the temporary pier to the coast of Gaza and resume humanitarian aid to the people who need it most. Now, the National Security Council spokesperson has said that Israel has not crossed a red line with the U.S. John Kirby says Israel has the right to go after Hamas after the October 7th attacks. But he also says that Israel's actions have not demonstrated it's launching a full-scale ground invasion in Gaza. Julia, thank you very much. Julia Wong out of London this morning.